What's up, my carcamaniacs out there? This is Caracamo, the forger of pain. I am a pro wrestler that loves video games, horror, anime, and everything geeky related. And welcome back to Caracamo Gaming, celebrating Carcaween. If you're a horror fan and grew up especially in the golden age of the 80s, watching movies like Nightmare on Elm Street and Friday the 13th, did you ever imagine a fighting game with all these fiends duking it out? No? Well, you should have. Anywho, Terror Drone, Rise of the Boogeyman made your twisted, corrupted fantasy fetish come true. Like I always say, these official and unofficial projects, they always get lost in the shuffle by AAA titles, you know, with your FIFAs, your Maddens, the Call of Duties, and ugh, just by thinking about it, I, I feel kind of sick. Give me a second. Okay, uh, where was I? Oh yeah. This endeavor started as a hobby. As time went by, the hobby evolved into a personal project, you know, as hobbies do. This game took nine years in the making. Now that's what I call passion for a project. And it turned into this awesome fighting game paying tribute to horror legends. But it's basically fight an arcade ladder against 13 other opponents. And no, there is no big bad boss. I mean, most of them, they're all bad. As we begin my fetish, uh, I mean game, we'll be welcomed in the character select screen by 14 iconic slashers for the most part. I'm pretty sure you'll recognize most of them. Popular faces, no, 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 cut back to me. Faces, because you know, some of them wore masks. Such as... Jason Voorhees from Friday the 13th, Leatherface from the Texas Chainsaw Massacre, Ghostface Kella from Scream, Mike Myers from Oh Behave, <laughs> yeah. Not that Mike Myers. Okay, Mike Myers from Halloween, Freddy Krueger from Nightmare on Elm Street, Charles Lee Ray or Chucky from Child's Play. Pinhead from Hellraiser. E. Candyman from, uh, bueno, Candyman. And to commoners, such as yourself, not so popular characters such as Herbert West from Reanimator, Matt Cordell from Maniac Cop, The Tall Man from Phantasm, and last but not least, Pumpkinhead from, uh, Pumpkinhead. The only good hero-ish character amongst these little devils is Ash Williams from Evil Dead. We can't complain with this rich roster. The developer had more characters planned for the game, but they were tossed aside for time constraints. How did we end up in this dark universe, if you will? Each one of these guys has a mini-story and obviously a conclusion to their respective journey. I would have liked a simple animated conclusion like the ones in Street Fighter or the aforementioned Samurai Showdown. But hey, it's all good, baby. Modern games like Mortal Kombat X or Mortal Kombat 11 for that matter, just give us a slightly animated JPEG. So, don't blame this fan game. The first time I gazed my eyes upon this gem, I thought the characters were some sort of digitized graphics, but it turned out the developer had experience in 3D modeling, working for Ubisoft no less, in games like Assassin's Creed and Far Cry. Yeah! Unexpected. The graphics are pre-rendered models that include the characters and the stages. Which, you know, it's an old technique used in other games before, but I think it was most popularized back in the day by titles as Resident Evil and especially 
the Resident Evil remake on the GameCube. Another common mistake people make is they assume this game was made with the Mugen or Mugen engine. An assumption made by yours truly. But it was actually made with 2D Fighter Maker. Returning to the arcade mode, remember when in fighting games, bonus levels were a thing? Street Fighter destroying a car. Mortal Kombat may you test your might. From Samurai Showdown to World Heroes, Terror Drone Rise of the Boogeyman has you surviving a horde of zombies, which is fitting for a game of this nature. If you ever played a fighting game in your life, especially Mortal Kombat and Street Fighter, you'll feel right at home. The gameplay is simple and very intuitive. And the developer was nice enough to give us a move list. You just have to pause the game and, you know, just take a gander. The characters are well represented and you can tell the love and passion that went into this game. The characters and most of their moves and special attacks are references to their movie counterparts. Jason is the only character which has two versions. One where he hacks the living crap out of you with his trusty machete, and the axe version. Other characters have a big size difference, that's what she said. Like Shucky being the smallest character in the game, and Pumpkinhead being the tallest one. Son of a bitch! <laughs> All the usual tropes of a fighting game are included in Terror Drone. The characters' taunt fit each of their personalities, and they are not taunts for the sake of being taunts. For the most part, the taunts, I'm saying taunt a lot, right? Anyway, uh, the taunts grant special temporary upgrades. Some taunts replenish sub-weapons or characters' assist. Yup. Soup weapons or limited sub abilities were also added to the mix. They even include supers! Or, in this case, unleashed attacks. Each character includes a meter below the health bar, and once it's full, well, unleash the beast, baby! My favorite one has to be Freddy Krueger turning into a worm, just like the movie! A Nightmare on Elm Street 3 Dream Warriors. <laughs> Obviously, they took some creative liberties with some characters. Like the Scream Killer, where he performs a combo ending in a kind of a Shoryuken. Which is, you know, understandable. Because what else can you do with a guy that just stabs people? Or in the case of Michael Myers, where he just spawns a tomb out of nowhere and throws it to you. Well, there are fatalities in this game. All of them end in a decapitation with a unique twist that fit each character. My favorite one being from Pinhead. Welcome to hell, wins. The developer intended to have more cinematic fatalities, but this was scrapped as he would have had to animate all 196 possible combinations. At the very least, he released some of the work he did before ditching the idea. The sound department is pretty damn accurate. Chef kiss. With sound effects ripped straight from the movies, and the soundtrack have recognizable themes as well. Don't hang up on me. Fight.
you have probably noticed by now in all the duration of the video that the stages are also well represented, including a lot of iconic places like Michael Myers house, Camp Crystal Lake, and even some created stages like the S-Smart where Ash Williams worked from Evil Dead, but they have a toy department that sells good guy dolls from Child's Play or my favorite one, Pennywise rocking some tunes as a DJ. In conclusion, my little creatures of the night, I definitely recommend this game. It's a mandatory experience, especially if you're a fan of horror and fighting games. And if you're not neither, yo, there's no excuse. Give this game a try. It has been released since 2013. Gratis. Yes, it's free. And as we speak, or as you watch this video, the developers are working on a sequel called Terrodrome Ring of the Legends, filled with mythical creatures, monsters from, you know, the public domain and urban legends. KO. Player two wins. By now, you should be interested in playing Terrodrome Rise of the Boogeyman. If you want to do that, go down to their official website and give it a go. It requires basically none fancy schmancy from your computer. Any PC can run it. Guys, this is Carcamo Gaming, and thank you for watching. Remember, like or die.